Hey there traders, this is Sam. Welcome back to another E-mini futures market recap for Friday, October 25, 2024. We're looking at levels in the SPY that will serve as our basis for entering trades in the E-minis today, if everything looks okay at the time. We've got about an hour until the opening bell. The current time is 8.23 a.m. Eastern. So far in the pre-session, they're trying to get back inside that range defined by the trend lines we've been talking about, that triangle consolidation that they broke down from and got under the other day. You can see current price up here. They're fighting the underside of that range, which is in this little zone up here defined by the dashed lines. If they get above and stay above this area, they should hit more resistance a little higher. And if I'm able to trade at all today and price happens to get above the highest level that I have on the board, there are some levels higher up that might become important in real time that could provide opportunities for a short up there somewhere. Down below, I have a few levels that should be important and serve as support if price falls the right way into them. Not sure what's going to happen on a Friday. Could be exciting, could be boring. I know I'll be busy all day. I have annual work-related activities all day and this evening. Probably won't have much time to trade today, and I definitely won't be finishing this post-market part of the video until Saturday at some time, maybe even Sunday. Per usual, whatever happens in the SPY and in the E-minis, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to talk about it. Catch you on the other side. We are back. It's now Sunday afternoon. So the spiders did some things that could be construed as atypical market behavior on Friday, at least in context of the trading strategy that I use. In particular, there were several reasons that this zone here should have provided more support when they came back down into it for bounce up. You can see that the opening price gapped above this area and kept climbing. So no big deal. That would usually be a sign that the bulls have the ball. They want to keep price elevated. So when they come back down into this zone later, you would expect that the bulls would play defense and protect this area. In other words, this would have been or should have been a good place to go long as price came down into it from above. But unfortunately, uh, there was basically no reaction and trading at that level would have gotten you into trouble. And we'll take a look at some more detail of that later. We can't expect every level to work 100% of the time. And in fact, we know that the long-term profit of this strategy as measured as how many trading days end in the green right now is around 80%. That means it's reasonable to expect that 20% of the days will end in the red. But this zone here had math behind it and other good reasons where price should have bounced at least a little as price came into it. So that's what I mean by things that seemed to be construed as atypical on Friday. Maybe we can look at some other time frames later and I'll show you what I mean. But let's talk about trading these levels from Friday morning according to the set of rules that define the strategy. What would have happened? We need a little bit more real estate. So I've expanded this chart a little. The first trade would have been a short trade at 5 82.68. That's with the five cent buffer adjusted toward price. I did mention in the pre-market part of this video on Friday morning that I did have other levels higher up. And really, according to the rules, you would have identified them on your own ahead of time. We'll see my trade at this level since I did record it. And you'll see me add a line up here uh, near the top of the day. And that was the next level up. And it turned out to be where the real resistance was. And I scaled in. I was actually five contracts short at this point and wrote it down. But if you didn't have the level from this morning and you stayed short from this level here at 582.68, you would have gotten a signal to reverse the trade when the trade was about 13 points out of the money. So after giving that much back to the market, you would have gained four points at least on the reversal as they kept going up. So let's keep track here. So far, a net negative nine points on this first trade. Now price is falling and you decide to go long at this same level for a recycle trade. Again, this is not taking into consideration the areas of resistance above, and that if you were correctly identifying levels of high probability support and resistance ahead of time, you would still be waiting out this short trade after scaling in in pretty much this whole area. But anyway, going long now at 582.78, we're adjusting the level toward price for five cents. This trade would have incurred a six point fumble, and then on the reversal, another base hit as they kept following. So now we're at a total of what is this, negative 11 points for the day so far. Basically, you would have lost two points on that trade. So what would have been a redemption trade here at this zone on the long side, expecting a bounce up, assuming the bulls were still in control and they were going to defend this area, you would have gone long at this zone, either by buying at each level or by buying in the middle. It's a small zone, but nonetheless, we'll take the approach that we always do for the benefit of keeping the tracking log accurate. We'll say that you bought your standard number of ES contracts at each level of this zone. That means, for example, if you traded two ES contracts at this level the first time, and you traded two contracts at the attempted recycle trade, then you would have keyed your orders in to buy two contracts 
at each level. So you would have been four long total. Your combined long position at this zone would have quickly reached what I use as my maximum loss limit, which is 20 ES points. And that would have happened before they got down to this next level. So for the purposes of keeping the percentages correct on the tracking log, this last uh, nine points or so, as they fell right down into this next level, you would have bailed out of the trade and it would be coded as a TKO, technical knockout in boxing terminology. So now we're at negative 20 points for the day. So at this point, it's up to you whether you want to use that maximum loss limit as the signal to not put any more money at risk for the rest of the day, or if you want to continue to trade at the levels that you had on the board from the morning, it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. But I'll tell you a little of how I look at the market and bad trades like this. So the market really has no idea and doesn't care that you lost money on any previous trade. The next trade has no idea if the prior trade was good or bad. I see each trade, or in the context of my strategy, each level as independent of one another. And to top that off, usually if one level is not respected the way you want it to, or, or zone in this case, the next level down or up is probably going to have a better chance of working out. It has a higher chance of working, and sometimes the price reacts right in the middle of the levels, and that can be sometimes frustrating. But it's also the reason that I advocate scaling in across multiple levels if you don't get the base hit that you're looking for the first time. So for the process of keeping the tracking log accurate, we're going to trade every single level that's put on the board each morning. That's the way every other playing by the rules uh, log is treated, every other level in that, that log, just as long as there are no violations of any rules as price comes down into each level. So you definitely would have traded at 5.79, at 5.8003 with, with the uh, level adjusted. And that was a nice, clean base hit, like really the first clean base hit of four points or maybe a point or so more if you're adventurous. And then would you want to take another long trade? No, I don't. Basically, you've traded that side of the level, one long position. It's good for the rest of the day. They might be valid for a recycle trade, which we'll talk about later on the other side. But for a long trade, no, that was it right there. So just to mention again, no violation of the rules as price was coming down into this uh, level. In fact, you want price to come into areas of support faster like this. It's usually better than if price comes in slowly toward a level. It might feel counterintuitive, but trust me, price behaves normally. And I'll kind of put that in air quotes. More often than not, if price is moving into a level with conviction. So anyway, this long trade here at 5.8003. You got your first clean four-point base hit of the day or more. And we're now at negative 16 points total. You're not going to take this long trade again, as I, as I said. Let price do its thing and go down. They come into 5.7855. And boom, another very clean base hit. These levels work the majority of the time. And you could have had at least four points more if you were adventurous. Now, would you have taken a recycle trade when they came back up to the underside of 580.03? Well, maybe toward price. No, you would not have. And the reason is because you want more time to elapse. I mean, it worked this time. They fell away. But the chance for a recycle trade would be over here. Enough time had elapsed when they got out of this to when they came back up into it again. I like to give them at least 20 minutes. So to round out the day, if you take another short trade here, whatever the original level was, as it was 03, so 93 would be five cents toward price as they're coming back into it. There it is. There's your base hit right there. So at this point, if we're keeping track, we would have ended the day, or you would have ended the day around eight points in the hole. Not great, but not too bad, all things considered, in terms of getting some redemption out of the other levels on the board for today. Friday was one of those 20% days. So if you're playing by the rules and treating each level the same. Now, before we watch the recording of the one trade that I took on Friday, which was the short trade right here at 582.73, keep in mind that early on, as they got above price, above this level, I was looking at another area of overhead resistance and planning to scale in. So what you'll, you'll see that happen. And after we watch this, we'll jump into some other time frame charts, and I'll try to explain why the price action when they came back down into this zone and acted like it wasn't even there, just sliced right through it. It's more of an anomaly than maybe something more predictable. Before I start playing this, I'm already in a short position that's above this level up here. And that is because I got into the office a little late, about a minute after 9.45, got set up. So I missed my chance to sell short here. And I just saw it as an opportunity to get a better price, fully expecting them to come back down. I knew there was at least one good area of overhead resistance above, but I was willing to sell again. But right now I'm short two, looking for a base hit. And they got above, as you know. And you'll see me add a horizontal line on the SPY chart. I think it's around 584.20. That was the level I was banking on to turn this thing around and make my short position pay off. And at this point, I'm, I started out with two, and I'm five contracts short at this point. I scaled in, so that was kind of the last hit. I, I didn't want to really add to the position anymore, full, knowing full well that it, if it was one of these rare days they continue to go higher, then I'm taking a bigger loss. 
So this isn't really the way I like to trade these levels. I'd rather get quick base hits, but this is part of the strategy. So you can see the whole picture first and plan accordingly. So I held on, decided that after I took three contracts off here, I would try to trail the remaining two contracts down for to, to around the top of this zone here and just jump out of that point. And then I'll decide if I want to buy again at that area for a long trade. So as you'll see, the trailer, I haven't got there yet, but the trailer of the two contracts was stopped out as almost 12 points or so, which is still pretty good in my book. And that was after pulling about six points, which is what you see here on the first three contracts. But the point is I got out of front of the zone. So let me just go ahead and speed this up. So you'll see this three contracts. I'm good with that. I'm trailing two down. And I put a limit order on top of the zone right there. Never got there. So they stopped me out at the 12 points or so on the trailer. And then I decided to not take any more trades for the day. Several reasons. The first trade had taken a lot longer than I anticipated. I had a lot going on at work for the rest of the day. You could say that I got lucky that I just didn't happen to take any more trades because I avoided this you know, trade that would have messed uh, maybe screwed me over. But there are other things that I'll show you, like I mentioned earlier, that kind of made this whole price action around here seem kind of off and abnormal. But I'd let this go for a while, stopped this at uh, 2 o'clock, maybe a little after 2 or so. No, it wasn't even 2. You can see it. But I didn't I didn't touch this. I just watched this as I worked on other things. So Missed these other trades, but just as well, because that would have been the problem trade right there. So here's a one-minute chart. So here is the middle of that zone. This is like exactly if you, if you bought at the top and the bottom of the zone, this would this would be where your average entry price was. And they hit this, the vertical line here is 1.14 p.m. You just want to have this intersection as the convergence of price and time when you would have gone long here expecting a bounce up. We're just going to zoom in a little bit. So we're starting out with a one-minute chart. Let's see if we see anything on the five-minute chart. Uh, not a ton, but you can start to see here this level here or this area, kind of a breakout area where they got below. But maybe it makes more sense on a 10-minute chart because now not only do you see this area, where is like, let's just say price didn't gap above. They just kind of came up into this. Well, they're probably not going to just go through this the first time. They're probably going to have some type of reaction. Not to mention that you have this 200 period moving average coming down. So my original idea in the morning was if price continues to go up in the morning, they're going to get to this area at some point. It's going to converge with the 200 period moving average, this kind of area that they broke down from. It's likely they're not going to just go through it the first time. They're going to have some type of reaction, but they gapped above it. Like I said earlier, not a problem. They're coming back down. Now they're on top of it. Be a great chance to go higher. But the fact that this 10 minute, what is a 10 minute chart here? This uh, 120 candle, it closed well below this, this 200 period moving average and this area, which is already important. It's a zone for other reasons too. Anyway, so that's kind of a clue that, okay, something else is going on. And then a 15 minute chart, you see them get the blow of this 100 here already. They closed right at it. And then this next 15 minutes, which I think is an hourly close. Yeah. 130. They're below their 100 period moving average, which means if I go to the hourly chart, you can see, you know, this close is well below this. That's the hourly close, 1.30 p.m. Maybe if we see anything else, half hour chart, 30 minute chart, they sliced through two important moving averages. They closed this 1.30 candle here. So you start to see things you would have probably, you know, I'm not saying it'll be easy to do, probably wanted to second guess what was going on here in the first place because there was not a bounce at all to jump out. And maybe not, what I'm saying is maybe you wouldn't have incurred that Maximum loss limit not lost another nine points or so after being in the hole of negative 11 points or whatever it was at that point in time. Let's just take a look at an hourly chart see if we see anything else. Not really, but just that, you know, in the middle of this, at what was it, 1.14 p.m.? They're down here, no bounce, and they're got, you've got 15 minutes, sit 15, 16 more minutes until the end of that hour. And they close down here. I don't know. This is kind of weak. Let's see, right now, I mean, this is Sunday afternoon here. But anyway, they closed, of course, at 577.95 in the pre-market. So they've dropped even, you know, they've dropped down a little bit after the closing bell. So anyway, just some things that just feel a little off. And maybe while we're at it, let's look at, let's see if we can learn anything on the weekly chart. So not really. It wasn't a clear signal. Timing's still, you know, not too out of question for them to pull back some more, but there's no clear signal. All we have is really timing at this point. It's still very bullish in the big picture. But you just start to see some things, as we saw earlier, on smaller time frames that kind of start to kind of give me the feeling that things aren't quite behaving normally, but a little, little early to say. Still above this 20-period moving average, really nothing bearish until we get down. Look, we already saw the 15-minute, you know, 10-minute, 5-minute charts. Things were just kind of acting a little unusual, at least at that point in the day. So really nothing conclusive. We could wake up Monday morning, which is tomorrow morning, 
uh, with something quite a bit different than this. Not this week, but next Tuesday and Wednesday, the first week of November, is an FOMC announcement. Maybe they're waiting on something. So far, we don't have a big October surprise, something that traders talk about. But in terms of where they're at in the daily and the weekly charts and the bigger picture things, really nothing conclusive. They're still bullish, but things are happening. They're kind of within this range, and they got to make a bigger move sooner than later, just my opinion. On the tracking logs, if you need to pause this to read through, if you want to, you can start reading the notes here, starting at level six, 13 point fumble, so forth and so on. As they work their way down, then I was keeping track of the points just to show you kind of where we're at, because by the time you hit the negative, you know, loss limit in this average, then this, you know, what I call a TKO, you still have these other levels down here, which would have pulled you out a little bit. It was kind of a nice balance of you, you gave some, took some away, you gave some, took some away. It wasn't like you just hit it all at one time. Uh, anyway, that's playing by the rules. And then my trades were just the two. Well, well I, this one here at level seven was kind of identified in real time. So I averaged in, you saw what happened. So I'm short five across this area and then pulled the net equivalent of what was 8.48 points because it was $21.20, $2,120 on that short trade. Uh, just giving it some time to work out. So we covered a lot in this video. If you found it helpful and learned something, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so you can stay updated with these daily levels and trading strategies or just ideas that I'm putting forth. And if you're interested in learning more about the strategy or want to use these levels alongside me each day, then you can find more information in the link below for the daily levels subscription and the upcoming trading course. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts on Friday's trades. I appreciate hearing from you. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Monday, with the new levels and another game plan. Have a great rest of your day.